Hello friends, in this video, we will continue our discussion on vectors. So to begin with, let's take the help of a scenario in which two cars, car A and car B are situated at a point O as shown here. Now both the cars start moving and reach their respective destinations. Considering their initial point O as the origin, let's mark positive X axis towards the east direction and positive Y axis towards the north direction. So the final position of car A is 4,3 and the final position of car B is 8,5. So it means that car A travelled 4 km in the east direction or along the x axis and 3 km in the north direction or along the y axis. Now in order to represent the current position of car A, we can draw a vector from origin to the current position of car A. That is from point 0, 0 to point 4, 3 and this vector is called the position vector of car A. A position vector is a vector which is drawn from origin to the current position of the body and similarly we can draw a position vector for car B that is from origin to point 8, 5. Now let's focus on car A again. What if it would have taken some other path to reach its destination? like the one as shown here. Even in this case, it would have travelled a total of 4 km in x direction and a total of 3 km in the y direction. So it means that whichever path you may take, the final result will be the same, that is 4 km along x and 3 km along y direction. Let's call the position vector of car A as vector OA. So vector OA can be divided into two components, one component along the x-axis and another component along the y-axis. So the component along x-axis will have a magnitude of 4 km and the component along y-axis will have a magnitude 3 km. The component along x-axis is written with i cap and the component along y-axis is written with j cap. So we can write Vector OA equals 4i cap plus 3j cap. Here we have successfully resolved vector OA as the sum of its individual components. You must note that the individual components that is 4i cap and 3j cap are also vectors and i cap and j cap are the unit vectors along x direction and y direction respectively. In the previous videos, we have learned to add two vectors to find out our resultant vector. Now in this video, we have done exactly the opposite. That is, we took a vector vector OA and then we expressed it as sum of two individual vectors that is vector 4i cap and vector 3j cap. Now try to write the position vector of car B in terms of its x and y components. So car B travelled 8 km along x and 5 km along y. So OB vector equals 8i cap plus 5j cap. Now I have an interesting question for you. Have a look at vector x. Two different sets of vectors that is vector a and vector a dash and vector b and vector b dash are drawn for vector x. You have to tell me which of these two sets correctly represent the components of vector x. So if your answer is vector a and vector a dash then your answer is absolutely correct because vector a plus vector a dash equals to vector x. But if your answer is vector b and vector b dash then again your answer is absolutely correct because even vector b plus vector b dash equals to vector x. So it means that the components of a vector need not be always perpendicular. But still we will always resolve a vector into perpendicular components. And all of this is done for a very practical reason. So the coordinate system that we choose has got perpendicular axis. And if we choose perpendicular components, then it makes our calculations easy. Let me show you with help of a simple example. So let us add vector OA and vector OB from the previous example. So vector OA equals 4i cap plus 3j cap and vector OB equals 8i cap plus 5j cap. Now in order to add these vectors, we can add their respective components that is i cap with i cap and j cap with j cap. So vector OA plus vector OB equals 
4 plus 8 i cap plus 5 plus 3 j cap and that becomes 12 i cap plus 8 j cap now what does this answer tells us it tells us that the resultant of factor oa in vector ob is the sum of two perpendicular components its component along x axis is 12 i cap and its component along the y axis is 8 j cap now moving further if you wish to find out the magnitude of this resultant factor then you can simply apply pythagoras theorem in the triangle as shown here so the magnitude of vector oa plus vector ob to the whole square equals 12 square plus 8 square which becomes 208 so the magnitude of the resultant vector is equal to under root 208 now after finding out the magnitude of the resultant vector we can also find out its direction by finding out the direction i mean to say that we can find a unit vector in the direction same as the direction of resultant vector and how to do that we can simply divide the vector by its magnitude see a vector has a magnitude and a direction and if we divide this vector by its magnitude then its magnitude will become 1 so we will get a unit vector in the same direction as the vector so the direction of vector oa plus vector ob is 12 i cap plus 8 j cap upon under root 208 so till now we have learned to resolve a vector into its components when the coordinates of its tail and head were given to us but what if the coordinates are not given to us so there is another way by which we can resolve a vector into its components so consider a vector a as shown here now this vector has a magnitude small a and it is inclined at an angle theta from the positive x axis and now we will resolve this vector into its x and y components in order to do so we will take the help of some basic trigonometry so first of all we will draw the x component and y component as shown here let's say that the length of x component is ax and the length of y component is ay now we have a right angle triangle and in this triangle sin theta equals ay upon a so ay equals a times sin theta and cos theta equals ax upon a so ax equals a times cos theta so now we know the magnitude of x and y component of vector a and we already know their direction that is the x component is along i cap and y component is along j cap so we can write vector a equals a cos theta i cap plus a sin theta j cap now you must note that if a vector a makes an angle theta with any axis then its component along that axis will be a cos theta and its component along the perpendicular axis will be a sin theta now you have very well understood how to resolve a vector into its components now we will extend the same concept from two axis system to three axis system that is x y z coordinate system so suppose that we have a vector vector a in this coordinate system and this vector has a magnitude small a and this vector makes an angle alpha with x axis beta with y axis and gamma with z axis so the x component will be a times cos alpha i cap y component will be a times cos beta j cap and its z component will be a times cos gamma k cap now just like we use i cap for x component and j cap for y component we use k cap for z component and with this we will conclude our discussion for today and revise some key points that we have learned from this video a vector from origin to the position of body is called its position vector a vector can be resolved as sum of its components components need not be always perpendicular but we will use perpendicular components only for ease of calculation the component along x axis is written with i cap the component along y axis is written with j cap and the component along z axis is written with k cap if a vector a having magnitude is small a makes an angle theta with an axis then its component along that axis will be a times cos theta if a vector a having magnitude is small a makes an angle alpha from x axis beta from y axis and gamma from z axis then it can be resolved as 
वेक्टर ए इक्वल्स ए कॉस अल्फा आई कैप प्लस ए कॉस बीटा जे कैप प्लस ए कॉस गामा के कैप वेन वी एड टू और मोर वैक्टर्स वी एड दैम कॉम्पोनेंट वाइज दैट इज आई कैप विथ आई कैप जे कैप विथ जे कैप एंड के कैप विथ के कैप If a vector is expressed as sum of its components then the magnitude of that vector will be under root of sum of the squares of each component for example if vector a equals ax i cap plus ay j cap plus az k cap then magnitude of a equals under root ax square plus ay square plus az square and the direction of this vector will be vector divided by its magnitude in this video we have learned how to resolve a vector into its components now in the next video we will learn about vector multiplication till then keep revising